Hi, this is Dr. Kimberly Leonard. You're listening to Incredible Life Creator Podcast. Our guest today is Chancellor Kay Jackson. Yeah. Chancellor Kay Jackson was born in Fulton County, Georgia, to Native American parents, grew up in Smyrna, Georgia, and attended Stetson University. For nine years, he played football at the high school and collegiate level. After graduating with a bachelor's degree in communication and media studies, Chancellor lived abroad in China from 2018 to 2019. Chancellor fell into writing after his traumatic experience of being arrested and detained in Beijing for 14 days. His first book, 14 Days in Beijing, has ranked number one over 15 times on Amazon in multiple genres. Wow. Welcome to the <laughs> podcast, Chancellor. <laughs> Blessings and balance to you. I appreciate you for having me. Well, thank you. And it's nice to meet a fellow Georgian. We're both from Georgia. Oh, yeah. Stand up. Go Braves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go Braves. That's right. Go Braves right now. <laughs> I'm praying hard. What? <laughs> praying hard. Me that. Me that, man. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So, so just so people get to know you, tell us your story. Um, so, yeah, I'm from Georgia, born and raised, uh, played football for nine years. Um, started in eighth grade all throughout high school and then took it to the next level, played D1 ball in uh, Florida, the Stetson University, go Hatters. Um, after I graduated from Stetson, I obtained my bachelor's degree in communication and media studies. And then my first job. I landed after graduating from college was in China teaching English to children. So that's how I ended up out there. Um, I was out there for six months total. I was supposed to do a year, but I only did six months. Um, China was absolutely amazing. Best experience I've ever, ever experienced. I highly encourage everybody to live abroad one day at some point in time along their journey. Um, you learn so much. Um, but yeah, China was absolutely amazing. And then April 4th, 2019, I was arrested and uh, did 14 days in the Chinese penitentiary. After I was uh, released, deported from the country immediately, came back to America, continued to teach, uh, got into coaching, football. Um, I'm also a life coach, partnered with this nonprofit organization called the UMay Foundation. Um, and yeah, just, I got some more projects coming soon and just, Man, running a couple of marathons trying to get established, essentially. So beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> so uh tell me about football. You know, it's so many people's dream to be able to even play at the college. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was uh I play DB for those that are football fans. I'm defensive back, I play corner. Free safety, strong safety, nickel corner, you name it. You know what I'm saying? I'm a true DB. All in all, that's the only position I've ever played in my entire career. Um, so yeah, it was it was always a grind. Football was love of my life, but it, was, it taught me a lot. You know what I mean? I, it was never an easy process. Nothing was easy when it came to the sport. I, I had to grind and put in a lot of work just to get to where I was able to to get and um, Man, I'm just so resilient. You know what I'm saying? I faced a lot of adversity playing this sport, a lot of ups and downs. I wasn't highly recruited coming out of high school. I had to put my I had to market myself to colleges and was able to get into Stetson, just, you know what I'm saying, on my own strength. And even once I got to Stetson, there was still a lot of, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, obstacles and a lot of uh, politics and, you know what I'm saying, just adversity that I had to face. And, you know what I'm saying, just to, to play and was finally able to to play. You know what I'm saying? I stuck it out. Um finally got a chance to 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 play. And I was, you know what I'm saying, really just content at that point. Like I'm like, okay, I've been playing the sport for almost a decade and you know what I'm saying? it has me lots of opportunities and allowed me to do things that most people would never get to experience. Um and I'm grateful, you know what I'm saying? I was able to get to this level, the top level, level I always wanted to do with that solely on my own, you know what I mean? So all in all, now I'm really good, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do I want to try to attempt to make the NFL, try to shoot for the NFL? No, I'm really good. <laughs> I'm, I'm burnt out at this point. So that's when it was a shift within my journey now, because it's like, okay, 
I identified as a football player and a student athlete for so long. I truly embodied it. So now that is no longer the case. It's like, okay, Chancellor, who are you? Who are you? You know what I'm saying? Now, it's a reality that most athletes have to face at some point in time along, you know what I'm saying, within their career. Once that career sport comes to an end, man, it's like, okay, yeah, who are you? You know what I'm saying? So, and that's huge, huge um, identity check. And it can send some people off the deep end. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If they're not mentally or uh, emotionally uh, capable or just strong enough to, you know what I'm saying, handle it. You know what I mean? So I was like, I don't know what I want to do, who I'm going to be. Um, I really got to relearn myself all over again. So I know it's going to be a process. So that being said, that's where to start. I don't know, I got to start somewhere. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm just going to just start applying for just random jobs. You know what I'm saying? I have no clue what I want to do. So, I'm as I'm job searching, I'm just applying for any and everything I feel like I can do. I'm a fast learner, mm-hmm. uh, disciplined, um, hard worker. So, it's like, all you got to do is just show me the ropes. And once I get a hang of it, oh, I'm going to just take it and run with it then. You know what I'm saying? So, that was just my whole approach when it was job, when it came time to job search. Um, and I was applying for jobs, landing interviews, getting flown out, put up in hotels, the whole nine. I did this process for eight months straight and continued to get told no from every company <laughs> I was applying for. And it was mainly corporate, the corporate world, you know what I'm saying, sales, marketing, management, you know what I'm saying, that whole aspect. Um, and they kept hitting me with the same BS excuse. Oh, it's the experience. You know what I'm saying? You like the experience. It's like, y'all knew that before we set all this up. Y'all, y'all knew that when I to submit the resume. You know what I mean? You got, you know what I'm saying? But hey, two weeks on. He ain't even gotta. Hey, don't even worry about it. I know it's something better in store for me. Just gotta keep going, keep uh, just filtering through. And after this, and I graduated, I'm back home. I'm like, okay, I gotta try something else because <laughs> I've been doing this same formula for X amount of months, and it hasn't got me anywhere. It's got me in the door but like far as you know what i'm saying kicking the door in and like yeah i'm here no nah, yeah, i still ain't so it's like i gotta do i gotta reapproach this whole job searching thing so i stopped searching for jobs in corporate and started searching for jobs more geared towards social work and took it from just domestic let's trek globally you know what i'm saying for jobs now because you know what i'm saying the world is huge and that's when i came across the opportunity to teach english in china seeing it and that's a big jump. I mean, you you're in the United States, and now you're going abroad. I mean, this is the first job to tell me yes in eight months of applying. Mm-hmm. So hey, you, you got to look at it from a uh, fresh crowd as graduate. Did he didn't did everything textbook quote unquote the right way? But here I am, I'm back home. I ain't got nothing lined up after you know what I'm saying graduating. I'm just driving over like nah, nah. I'm not content with this. I'm not satisfied with this at all. I ain't do the systematic way for nah hell no nah, hell no nah. i'm not out there i don't say well in my spirit at all so uh, something got to shake i know something's going to shake i just can't quit i can't quit that's one thing i know i can't quit uh, i just continue to just readjust my search process until i came across some uh, opportunity applied for it. and man first these first folks tell me yes on the other side of the world it's no if ands or buts about it at this point. <laughs> America don't want to uh, mess with me. China, hey, yeah, y'all want to? Hey, let's go. Let's see what China talking about then. Y'all, hey, look, come on. So, and I'm a Sagittarius. I'm adventurous. I'm spontaneous. I'm optimistic. So, and China's always been a place of interest of mine. It ain't like it's just I just came across. You know what I'm saying? This idea was just thrown in my face, and I'm just, oh yeah, let's do it. You know, I've always been interested in China ever since I was a child. I, even the introduction of my book. I flash back to a Saturday morning when I'm sitting at the breakfast table with my mom and my brother. We just eating. My mom asked my brother now. She said, "What's three places in the world y'all want to go?" I make sure that we go. First place in my mind was China. She be like, "Me crazy? Like why China? You know what I'm saying? You had your answer ready and everything. You confident behind that? Why China?" I was like, "That's where everything's made. That's the only reason I had. I'm seven, eight years old. That's only. I'm like, you look at the back of any product. It's like made from where? China. So I'm like." It just always piqued my interest. Okay, everything we have here in America is made from one place. So I'm like, them folks got something going on over there that we don't. You know what I'm saying? It's all like, why, you know what I'm saying? All the products we have here are made from over there. So I'm like, I don't know what they got going on over there. So I was always interested in China, just at, from a young age, just from that small thing. You know what I'm saying? So 
the fast forward 15 years. Now here, here we come. Oh man, I'm finna get ready to China to teach. It's full circle. It's lit. It's lit. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> and this first first job in this. Oh yeah. Yeah. So as I'm listening to you, I'm hearing the same thing playing over and over. It's tough, but you push through. You don't know where you want to go, but you keep looking. You don't mm -hmm. stop searching to find that thing. And you know, you're you're a young man right now, but there are people now in their 40s, 50s, 60s who, with all that's been happening in the world in the last year or two, they're in the same position that you were in, mm. except for different, because all of a sudden their job has been taken out from under them for some reason, or their mm. businesses are gone, and they're out there. And I think your story has a lot of relevance in that it can help people to know that, hey, you don't stop searching until you find it. You know, it's no. so easy, especially as us being older. It's like, well, you know, I looked at 10 places and none of them wanted me. So, <laughs> you know, what am I going to do? But you just kept going and going and going and going. Yeah, it's like we, uh, my coach, my coach always preaching in football. is like a thousand reps. We need, we a thousand reps from being great. And you really think about it. You do something a thousand times, you're going to be pretty proficient at it by that thousand times. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, as a small little, you know what I'm saying? Small little quotes and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? That they used to beat into our heads. It's like, man, it translates to life. You know what I'm saying? It's a thousand reps. Anything, you want to get good at anything? Yeah, a thousand reps. Mm -hmm. thousand, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, yeah. Like you said, I would apply for 10 jobs. Oh, man, that ain't enough. 10, you know what I'm saying? I can, hit, I can get no from all 10 of them. I need to hit about 10 more. For, you know, I got to double that 10 for sure. So just increase my odds. You know what I mean? So just resiliency. That's all it is. Resiliency. We want something, you're going to do it. And you're going to take a stand that, you know you're saying? You're going to die behind whatever it is you're getting at. You're not going to quit. That's the only distinguishing quality between whoever else is going through something that wants something or is finna go through it or already went through it is that you're not going to quit. Yeah, that's so key. <laughs> so let's, let's see. You want you said China when you were a child because everything's made there. Mm -hmm. So you get to China, and what do you find? Um, just a different world. Honestly, it's like man, life is still the same. Like typical everyday people get up, go to work. You know what I'm saying? Come home, got families. Oh, you know, it's still life, but it's difference like it's it's drastically different just because i don't look like none of the people here i don't speak their language fluently um and this culture and just the whole society and system is drastically different than where i come from but with all that being said like man these people chinese people really cool like you know what I'm saying? I was like, damn, these, these people really cool like in america it's different you know what i'm saying sometimes it's, it seems like to be a lot of uh, animosity between Asian culture and, you know what I'm saying, other especially people of my color, you know what I'm saying? So it's always been fused and stuff like that. But to go to their actual land where they originate is like, man, I'm just, I'm fully, I'm, fully, I'm being fully embraced, you know what I'm saying? People like really are genuinely like excited to see me and you know what I'm saying? Uh, cater to me. Expect, I, mean, you, I experienced some of the best customer service I've ever experienced in my life in China. And they don't accept tips. They just doing their job. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, these folk different. You know what I'm saying? It's different. It's different here. Um, so just as far as just the, the people, the frequency of the people, I'm like, okay, I, I didn't think y'all was going to be this cool and it, it's going to be this harmonious as far as, you know what I'm saying, just the natives. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the natives is cool. Um, I went to China to work, so if I would, based on how my work experience is going to be, that's going to dictate my whole, you know what I'm saying, dictate the whole thing. So I'm like, my job, fortunately, fortunate, fortunate enough for me, my job really spoon fed me and eased me into the teaching process. They walked me into it, you know what I'm saying? Some of my peers, as soon as we got done with training, they was just thrown straight into the fire. <laughs> it's like, they got about four, five classes. I'm like, but we just finished training. How you got this many, you don't even know what you're doing. So it's like, it was very stressful for some of them. Me, my job, my center, they just eased me into it. Like, so, it was, and then the kids made it. Oh, the kids just work well. I was teaching eight kids, young students, all the way to 14. I'm mainly working with like the elementary school age kids. So, like, kindergarten to fifth grade, 
Oh, we get, and I'm young too. So I'm still young, so it's like I can match their energy. So we be in class. We be having a blast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My class is always a blast. Um, so working made the experience worthwhile. Um, the food, people, I am saying the food was fire. Food was so good. Food was good. Like they have, they use this, they eat the same stuff we eat far as like the meats we choose, the meats we have available here and the produce. Now they have some some produce that you can't have you we don't have access to here, but all in all, it's still essentially the same stuff, you know what I'm saying, we eat here in America. But they just cook everything differently. That's the only difference. You know what I'm saying? That's the only difference. Um, but food is fire. Food is food is absolutely amazing. Um was there anything that dope. surprised you? Was there anything the that really surprised you when you got there that you weren't expecting? The hygiene. The hygiene. Chinese people hygiene is different. <laughs> Their hygiene is different. I say this every day. I, I write. I speak about it a lot within the, uh, my book. Their hygiene is different. They don't wash their hands. They don't wash their hands. And a lot of them they don't really brush their teeth either. Um, so I'm like, man, if you're not washing your hands, you're not brushing your teeth. I know you're not really washing your body like that. You know what I mean? I know you're not. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know you're not. But, um, yeah, the hygiene different. Aside from that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Aside from that, China cool though. Know, it's, it's cool. It's cool. It's yeah. But it, 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 I feel like everybody would if, if everybody would have visit China at least have the uh, opportunity to you enjoy yourself without a doubt. It wouldn't be a negative experience. So how did it so happen being there, being a teacher? How did you get arrested? Because obviously you stood out. <laughs> Nobody else looked like you. So do you feel like they were just like they were, they saw someone who looked different and just got scared and said, let's arrest this guy? Well, technically I was doing something I, was, I, had, I had no business doing. Um, so it's April 4th, 2019. Um, it's, it's a day off for me. And I plan on heading to an event later in the afternoon. So before I head to the event, I'm like, I'm a pregame before I go. Those that don't know what pregaming is, it's when you and a group of people for y'all get ready to go out on a night full of festivities. It's like, hey, let's meet at so-and-so house first. And we're going to turn up there. And then we're going to go out and have even more fun. So I'm just by, I'm at the apartment by myself, drinking some Chinese liquor, smoking some cannabis on my little pipe, enjoy my crossfade. And then once I, you know, say I finish, I start getting dressed. You know what I mean? Boop, boop, boop. Finna get ready to uh, leave here, knock at the door. Looked at the people, it's three police officers from the Beijing police um, on the other side of the door. So, of course, my heart sinks into my stomach. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> what they doing here? <laughs> Trying to put everything up, open the door. They walk in um, and they pretty much questioned me about drugs. I'm sitting there playing the fool. Like, I don't know what they talking about. Um, go get my documents, visa, passport, and all of that. They looking over it. And time passes, another officer enters the apartment. He has something in his hand and it's pretty much a drug test. So it's a, it's, it is a drug test. So they drug test me right there on the spot. And as soon as he pulled it out, I was like, I already knew it was over with. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, it's over with. <laughs> it's over with. <laughs> I'm like, well, it's over with. So do the drug test, fail the drug test, of course. More officers to enter the apartment by now. One of them speaks English fluently, so he's just interrogating me about just failing the drug test and about who I got the, the the weed from and when was the last time. You know what I'm saying? Just want to see if I can give him any viable information as far as a source. Once he realized that I wasn't gonna give him any information, that's when you know what I'm saying. It was like, all right, come on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She's her straight over with. So confiscate if confiscate everything, throw the cuffs on me. And Send me down in the police van. And now I'm just reflecting. Like, man, this shit is real. <laughs> I'm like, it's getting real. Like, I can't believe this. I'm just, I'm still hot too. So I'm like, man, I can't believe this is happening, but it's happening. Nobody knows this is happening to me. I don't know what's gonna happen. Um, communication has stopped. So we're gonna see. You know what I'm saying? Just hey, remain positive, take note of every minor detail. Because it's going to be a great story to tell once you're out of this predicament. Most importantly, enjoy this high one last time because we don't know what's going to happen. I'm saying it all this. I'm saying all this to myself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just in the back of the van, like, man, I don't know what's going to happen. But 
I know it's gonna be a great story to tell. I knew it though. So we get to one precinct there briefly. I'm talking about they just sat me down and they go, I don't know what they went to go do. They came back 30, 40 minutes later, come grab me, and we get back in the van. Nobody has explained anything to me. I don't know what's going on. So I'm like, well, I'm finna see. <laughs> we just uh, we just riding. We end up at another precinct. This one's a lot bigger. It's where they house me in a holding cell with about eight other Chinese men. Um, they do a, my official interrogation, which is dramatic within the book, because they take me down to the basement of the precinct, into this room, walk me to this uh, chair. It's all metal, and they open it up. This chair locked my shins, my waist, my chest, and my arms all into one place like this here. So the only part of my body I could move was my head, and I'm doing my whole interrogation like this. And by this time, I had plenty enough time to come up with a story to finesse them with. So I'm co- I'm cool and collected at this point. You know what I'm saying? I'm good now. I had some time to think. Y'all just y'all blitzed me early. Y'all, you know what I'm saying? I ain't had the right protection set for y'all. You know what I'm saying? To, to uh, handle that pressure, but I'm good now. So do the interrogation. They release me from the chair. Have me sign and a thumbprint the transcription. Give my mug shot, handprint, all of that. Throw me back into the cell. And I'm at the second precinct for 14 hours. Um, it's nighttime. They come back and get me, walk me to the lobby, bring my basket of clothes, tell me to get dressed. So I'm like, oh, okay, the hand thing to work down. There. Hey, we cool. So I can get dressed. I'm just standing in the lobby, just waiting. Like, ain't nobody explain nothing to me. I'm just like, I'm just, I'm just assuming everything to work down. I can get them folks what they want it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, they finna let me go. So they had me follow them through this door that's behind the front desk. And when I enter, I'm in a hallway now. At the end of the hallway, it's a small room crowded with officers. So I'm following the CO to the, to the room. And as I enter, I realize this is, a, is I'm like, this got to be like an evidence room or something. I see a bunch of evidence bags from previous cases on shelves. Um, it's a table in front of us. They got four TV screens on it where they watch the footage from the body cameras. To the left on the table is everything that's confiscated from my apartment. So the officers take the cannabis I had and they weigh it up right in front of me. And they told it out to be 1.4 grams. Now, if you partake, uh, you partake in cannabis, if you, if you don't partake in cannabis, we talking about units of measurement, 1.4 grams of anything. <laughs> it's not a lot. So I didn't have much, you know what I'm saying? So, but anyway, they signed, you know what I'm saying, put it all on paper, had me sign the thumbprint, it, and then we get back in the van. I don't know what's going I don't know what's going on. Nobody's explaining anything to me, again, again. I'm like, but if they ain't explained nothing to me since all this has started, ain't not, they definitely not finna tell me nothing now. So I'm just hoping they let me go. They finna take me back to the apartments. Um, so we riding, riding. I'm just flying. I, I just looking at the the, the signs because we're on the interstate, so I'm just looking at the signs. I've been in China for a good amount of time up to this point for me to at least be somewhat familiar of how to, you know what I'm saying, just the area. And I'm just like, well, I don't feel like we're getting any, anywhere close to <laughs> where I stay. <laughs> and then, like, you know what I'm saying, 30, 40 minutes passed, and we arrived at the facility with tall walls and barbed wire. I was like, okay, I see what's going on now. <laughs> I see what's going on. So, Take me to the jail, process me, give my uniform, take me upstairs, walk me to cell 209, and open the door. It's 4 o'clock in the morning at this time, so they open the door, and my psych is instantly thrown at just what I see. Immediately, I see two inmates standing up. They're, they're standing up against the wall, watching all the rest of the inmates sleep. And I'm looking at the inmates that sleep. It looks like a slumber party. That's how I describe it in the book. I'm like, I'm like, why it look like a slumber party? Like it's it's just a huddle of bodies. Just they all sleeping on wood. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, it's a huddle. I'm like, why it looks? I'm like, why? What is going on in here? Why is it? Why y'all up watching these folks sleep? Like what is going on? So <laughs> I'm looking at the two inmates that's up. They they surprised to see me. I'm surprised to see them. So we just <laughs> this moment of awkwardness. We just staring at each other like. What what's going on? So I look to the left, it's a bathroom. It's in the cell, it's an own separate room, but all the walls are made of glass. So everybody in the cell can see in it. It's a sink. The toilet is a squat toilet, so pretty much a hole in the ground you gotta squat over. 
showers and number the a, a water hose with a shower head tied to it. Black mold all on the walls, flies and gnats and stuff flying around. Um, still has one window at the very back, and it's pretty high. Um, there's a TV in the cell right above the cell door, and there's a camera in the room that's you know saying mounted high, capturing the the entire room. So after just scanning the place, you know what I'm saying. I, Still looking at uh, I'm looking at the the slumber party. I'm just doing a head count. I'm like, why I look so crazy? Like, I, literally, how I describe it, it, it? Like when you was a kid back in the day, and you had a sleepover, a slumber party with all your your friends, or cousins, or family members, and there's a limited amount of uh, space to sleep, so everybody got to make room. That's how I look. But random grown man, I'm sleeping on wood, so I'm doing a head count. Oh damn, it's 15 of us in the cell. How many beds? It's nine beds. Okay, that makes sense. Why <laughs> it looked it's looking the way it is looking. You know what I'm saying? They folks just making room. So I approached the slumber party, <laughs> try, to find, try to find a spot. And one of the inmates that was uh awake, he was two inmates up for them to make room, and they do. And I put my bowl and spoon in my cu- in the cubby, and I just lie down on my back, my hands on my chest, and I'm just staring at the bright light on the ceiling, just and now everything is completely sunk in. It's like <laughs> like okay this shit is real like it's real like i'm really locked up in a different country nobody knows i'm here nobody has explained anything to me i don't know how this process works i don't know what's gonna take place how long i'm gonna be here i'm i'm, I'm pretty screwed right about now like it's not looking too good <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's not looking too good but i gotta hold myself accountable I got to hold myself accountable. You know what I'm saying? I made a decision. And based on that decision, this was the result from it. So, you know what I mean? I'm just going to, I got to take it to the chin. I got to. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Um, first, first, people got to know that I'm here. So, in order for that to happen, folks got to realize I'm missing. So, how can, okay. Well, I didn't show up to that event today, which I, where I was going to meet coworkers and friends. So I know that was weird, but you know what I'm saying? I know it was weird, you know what I'm saying? But when I don't show up for work, because now technically it's going to be Friday morning. I've been, I've been in them folks' custody all Thursday. <laughs> now here we are creeping up on Friday morning. I'm like, all right, I know I'm going to have to sit through the rest of today and wait for Saturday when I don't show up for work. When I don't show up for work and for my 8 o'clock class on Saturday, oh, that's gonna be all the red, you know what I'm saying? That's gonna be all the red flags right there. Cause folks gonna I didn't show up for that event. Now I ain't at work. Oh yeah, something's wrong. Something's wrong. And at in addition to that, I had a girlfriend at the time. So I'm like, when I don't respond to two of her messages, that's another that's gonna set off another red flag. So I know I have to be patient for now before I become missing on people's radar. So I'm like, I know I'm gonna have to sit through the weekend at least. So this is all the things I'm just playing out. I'm just saying to myself, thing, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to better the situation, you know what I'm saying, the best that I can. But, you know what I'm saying, it, it's beyond my control. So I can only control so much now. So it's like, hey, just got to trust the process. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, at this point, you know what I mean? So it's like, hey, man, said a little prayer to the ancestors. And, yeah, I was locked up 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 15 people in one cell, nine wooden beds. And all I had was one plastic bowl and one spoon for 14 days straight. Wow. So how did you finally get out of there? It's in my hands. Them folks, I want, I'm asleep. Them folks, hey, come on. Call my name. Just call my number. Like, literally, I just, I had no clue. I'm just sitting. Sitting. Waking up with hopes that today might be the day. Going to bed disappointed. Like, man, hopefully tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? We get some type of information. You know what I'm saying? Just hoping. Hoping. And then, so finally, well, I'm just like, just like, okay. Stop getting your hopes up. You know what I mean? Stop putting so much energy on, you know what I'm saying? When's you going to get out? You know what I'm saying? No, you're going to get out. Just it's going to happen when it happens. You know what I mean? Just trust the process. So as soon as I just had that conversation with myself, that very next morning, they folks called my name, like, oh, grab your stuff. I was like, <laughs> yeah. And it was crazy because I had I had a, a lot of visions with, throughout the story as well. Uh, helped me predict at least give me an idea. They was really putting me, they was really telling my these visions were literally telling me what was going to happen, how long I was going to be there. One of them was telling me how long I was going to be there. I was just like, I, I'll break it down to you because it's early, it's early in the book. It's like chapter two or three. Oh, and everything I just described to y'all up until this point, that's pretty much chapter one. 
Mm-hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? It, it's still a whole lot of more stories there's to be unpacked, but it's still early within the, the stories, like chapter two or chapter three. Um, I'm asleep. I, I don't know that I'm asleep. I'm dreaming. The dream is like I'm kicking it with just some random people. I'm in China still. I'm kicking it with some random people, and we smoking, just vibing. And one of the people I'm in the group with just started to spark a conversation about getting arrested in China for weed, ironically. And she said, I heard if you get uh, you get caught with more than three grams of weed, it's an automatic month sentence. And as soon as she said that, it's just like the room just got silent. And I'm just really just focusing on what she's saying. And the more that I'm focusing on what she's saying, I'm starting to awake. And that's when I realize I'm dreaming. So once I'm up, I'm like, okay. That was, I'm just, one, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed by how in tuned I am with my subconscious to have a dream like that. Two, if she said one gram, I mean, three grams was an automatic month sentence. I got caught with 1.4, which is less than half of three. That equates to about two weeks worth of time. Does that mean I'm going to be here for two weeks? I don't know. I don't even think I could do two weeks in this place. I don't know. We're going to see, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's, it's, that's what, this book is crazy. It's, it's very enlightening. Very, very enlightening because I'm so spiritual and my mindset, the way, my mind is the way that it is. So it's like, it's, it's truly, truly enlightening because you can learn so much from a cultural aspect, a, a spiritual aspect, the emotional, mental, uh, logical. You know what I'm saying? You learn, you, you, you take away so much from this story. Rather, you can say you got interest with China or not, or rather you partake in cannabis or not. Like, it's something that you can take away from this story that will enlighten you as well as being entertained thoroughly you know what i mean so it, 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 it's a crazy story it's a, it's, a, it's a hell of a journey where can man people actually get that story where can they get that book oh man amazon 14 days just search 14 days beijing and then you need to pop up i got a free version available as well 14 days of beijing which is the first three chapters of the book um and that's available on amazon as well as apple books and kobo um but yeah, man, Amazon, 14 Days of Beijing. I got ebooks, paperbacks, hardcovers, audiobook coming soon. <laughs> audiobook coming soon for those that just don't like to read, period. All right, trust me. I got some for you. Just hold tight. <laughs> just hold tight. I got some for you. Awesome. So I have a personal question for you. What gives you the most happiness and fulfillment in your life at this point? Man, no, just able to take just my experiences and um, and my lessons learned and to be able to one, monetize off of them as well as inspire and encourage people to, you know what I'm saying, better themselves and never to let no hard time humble them. You know what I'm saying? We all face adversity. We all fall on our face at some point <laughs> along our journey. We all do it. All right. How, how you going to bounce back? How resilient are you? How much care? How much backbone do you have? You know what I'm saying? What's your character like? You know what I'm saying? And how well do you know yourself? Mm-hmm. How well do you know yourself? Are you chasing a dream? Or are you fulfilling your purpose? You know what I mean? So it's <laughs> it is you know saying for sure. It, it, it's a lot. You know, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Like I just feel like man, just. Yeah, just being able to just take my experiences and man, just turn them into create create something out of them that you know what I'm saying entertains people as well as you know what I'm saying enlightens them. And it's like, man, if I did it, man, y'all can do it too. You know what I'm saying? We all got stories. I'm sure you got a boatload of stories. You far older than me. You I, you have a lot more experience within your journey. I know you got some traumatic things you've been through. And you know what I'm saying? You can feel free to share it if you, you know what I'm saying, if you want to or not. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, we all got stories. We all got stories. So it's like, man, just tell it. <laughs> tell it. Don't be, you know what I'm saying? Don't be ashamed of it. Don't be scared. You know what I'm saying? Tell it. Put it into the universe. You know? And you see how therapeutic it is as, as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of things you'll just hold on to naturally, just suppress. This is not my, me writing this book was so therapeutic. Because I, once I got back to America, it's still April. You know what I'm saying? I didn't start writing this book to July. So that entire time frame, I had all of this, everything just on my mental, just just there. And with just me writing it. 
in full detail, like just getting it all on paper, I was able to release it truly. Now it's like, I can't, I can still break it down, break the story down to y'all, but like, as far as the details, details, like, man, you got to read it to get all the, get Got everything it? just cause <laughs> yeah, you know, cause it's like, it's, it's, I can give you just an overall description of it at this point, just cause I didn't release it truly. Like it's not even on my spirit like that no more. You know what I'm saying? So it's like to truly, truly get immersed with every detail. Yeah. You got to read it. I can give you a brief overview, but it's like, man, as far as all those, you know what I'm saying? The small, small things that make the story what it is. Like, oh man, you got to, man, I didn't release it. I don't let it, I fully let it go. You know what I mean? So now it's just, it's, it's in the world now and it's, it's going to do what it's going to do. And it's been going crazy <laughs> on top of that. So it's like, yeah, man, it's just, yeah. it's great. Well, you know, thank you so much for being on the podcast today and for sharing your story and your insights. It's been really helpful. I appreciate you for having me. You know what I'm saying? For sure, for sure. All right. Well, we'll talk to you again soon, Chancellor. All right. Peace.